So, dear God, I'm really happy that I spoke uh, right adjacent to Senator Crapo because around the halls of Congress, people mistake us for each other all the time. Uh, we look so much alike, uh, but I am indeed different than he. Um, I I'm just really happy to be here just because of this room. I believe this room holds a tremendous amount of potential for the world and the globe as a whole. We are in a crisis, and more people need to wake up to that. Now, I come to this crisis in a very different way than I imagine most of the people here. Because the last 20 years of my life, I've lived in an inner city. Uh, and I've seen things that have frustrated me beyond belief that Americans aren't conscious enough of. Uh, one of those things is just simply that the number one reason why kids miss school in America today, kids of school age, 5 to about 17, is because of asthma. Now, Senator Whitehouse, who has uh, been an incredible mentor to me, will probably come up here and talk to you about all the challenges of global warming and the urgency uh, for new energy, for reliable, baseload, uh, renewable energy. Uh, but I go home every week to Newark, New Jersey, and I talk to parents who have kids that are missing school. In fact, the number one reason for child hospitalizations, the number one reason for kids missing school, up to 10 million kids uh, a year missing school because of asthma. Now, what does that have to do with a conference like this? Well, it is killing the potential of my children. Right now, I have so many kids being undermined because of this one aspect of climate change and the particulate matters pouring into New Jersey's airspace, especially now that we've backed out of regional greenhouse gas agreements because of things like burning coal. And so for me, this is not a time to dilly-dally, to hesitate or to equivocate when there are pathways for, before us that if we boldly march down them, we can accomplish something great. One industry kid I used to work, work with one summer, uh, when I was trying to leave the kids at the end of a long summer program, I tried to tell them something inspiring, and I pulled from a story that was uh, given to me when I was a high school student about a, 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 a sort of a performance coach who asked us all to raise our hands as high as we could. We were sitting in seats like you all are now, and we all did, and he says, as high as you can, and we said, absolutely. He said, okay, well now go three inches higher. And as soon as he set a goal for us, we all actually did three inches higher. One person stood up. We realized we could do more. Well, I pulled these kids together and I said, okay, kids, high as you can, raise your hand. And I don't know if you ever work with kids. I don't care if they're inner city kids or affluent kids. Getting them to do what you want is a difficult thing. <laughs> uh, and being that I don't have that much, uh, uh, don't have any degrees in psychology, I decided to uh, resort to a very base form of persuasion that I know some of you all are familiar with. Uh, it's called bribery. Um, <laughs> And I pulled, reached into my pocket and I pulled out a $5 bill and I said, five bucks to the kid who can raise his hand the highest. Well, there is an innate capitalistic instinct in every child in America. And before you knew it, these kids, after doing a quick calculation in their head, their hands shot up. And I stood there very smugly happy that these children uh, were all doing as I said. Uh, I felt this great sense of satisfaction until I saw to my left the shortest of all the kids. I'll never forget his name was Robert. And he's the cutest kid in the world, like a cross between Gary Coleman and Webster in their youngest years. <laughs> and, and he had his arms crossed and his face in a pout and, and just looked so upset. And I was about to walk over and give him sympathy. Uh, and then as I, as I was just about to go over and say, there, there, you can't compete. These are taller kids. Don't worry about it. It's just an exercise. He turns and runs to the door. Well, I chase after this kid, uh, thinking that he's running home and, and his little legs are motoring out the gym. I catch him in three strides. And I pick him up and he's wiggling. I turn him around and I said, Robert, where are you going? And he says to me, let me go, let me go. I said, but Robert, where are you going? And he looks at me, looks at the other kids and back at me and with the wisdom that betrayed his age, he said, you would, said you'd give $5 to the kid who can raise his hand the highest, right? And I said, yeah. And he says to me, well, let me go because I know a way to get to the roof. <laughs> we in this nation right now need to get back to who we are. We are the country that gets to the roof. We are the country that rises. And when the planet is in peril, we are the nation that should be leading a way forward. And what is frustrating to me is after diving in deep and studying this issue, there is clearly a bold move for this country to make. But we're not making it right now. And part of the reason that's frustrating me about innovation in general now that I've been in Washington for two years is the government is often the one that's causing the problem. Look at a simple area. I've, I've looked at everything from the patent office to the FDA and, and even the FAA. Drone technology. We, we taught this globe how to fly. But drone technology and innovation is being done 
outside of this country more than inside of this country because of overregulation or an old regulatory framework from the FAA. And so here in this realm, we in government have to start acting boldly and let this be the nation of innovation again that leads. And so the cleaner and safer future depends, in my opinion, having carbon neutral power, baseload power. It's got to be about renewables. Now, I was in part of that scrum that came up with in, in, in a bunch of senators, including Senator Whitehouse, uh, my ally, a bunch of Democrats. We said, look, we're not crazy. We're not rushing to go export oil. But dear God, if we can get that in exchange for renewable tax credits, I I'm all for it. And the original proposals that we put forward had not just wind and solar, but also had nuclear energy. Because wind and solar is not enough to get us there. If we set that BHAG, get to the roof, that big, hairy, audacious goal, it can't be done with wind and solar alone. We have to be a country that steps up and says it has to be renewable, new advanced nuclear energy. It has to be there. By 2050, we are to, end, uh, uh, to be a carbon neutral country. And so if we're going to do that, we have to begin to lead from the government as well as the innovations we're already seeing in the investments from the private sector. And so today, we need to figure out greater ways to drive investment, to remove, dear God, the bureaucratic barriers, and to allow one of the greatest things we have going for us as a country is those innovators and those investors to unleash the promise of new nuclear technologies. Now, I'm really proud that I'm a part of this bipartisan effort. It's what I came to Washington to do, not to be a Democrat, but to find ways to work together with people across the aisle to get real things done. I'm really proud that we have a solid bill following the lead of the House that's talking about doing the things that we need to do. First, that the federal government needs to do more to partner with the private sector, as Senator Crapo mentioned. Second, that the NRC licensing process must be streamlined to allow new technologies to be approved in a timely manner. And third, that the federal government needs to exponentially increase our research and development spending on nuclear reactors. And again, R&D spending, which has been going down as percentage of GDP, must be increased in our country if we were to lead as the global innovators across the board and in this area. For me, this is about the kids in my city. For me, this is about kids in Camden and Patterson who are suffering not just because we are, have a polluted atmosphere, but it's also about creating an America for them that is bold and courageous again. Our efforts here will help with job creation, spurring our economy. It'll grow it in significant ways. It's going to solve for some of the waste problems we have from 1960s technology uh, and innovations uh, that we could solve for now if we were willing to move boldly in this direction. It's going to help us geopolitically by helping us be less reliant on foreign oil. And after a long classified briefing this morning, dear God, we need to move boldly in that area. This is a time where we need to lead, not dilly-dally, not equivocate, and dear God, not settle for three inches more. We as a country must now decide that we're going to the roof. Thank you.